Listen, everybody, we are in Austin, Texas, and we are live right now with the Housing Innovation Alliance at Whisper Valley, which is a high tech, a lot of innovation, affordable housing, everything that you could imagine being in a community with the development of homes and a development of builders is in this community right here. So with that said, part of this community is just that. It's a lot of technology. And we're gonna bring on some people that really understand this part of the business. But first, I want you right now to hit that like and share button. We are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. And guess what? You can find all this stuff right on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe. And if you're not following us, Dave Cooper Live and the Housing Innovation Alliance, please hit that follow and like button now. All right, with that said, so we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun today. Let me go to my banners here because we are gonna bring in two very smart people from EcoSmart Solution. And we're gonna have John Toole from uh, EcoSmart Solutions who is the CEO, as well as Greg Wolfson, who is the CTO, Chief Technology Officer, joining us right now. What's happening? Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. Hey Dave, how are you? I'm, you know what, I'm doing great. Look. Look at this background, man. I know. There's I wish I was there. In, this world and in, in my entire house at home. Yeah, we, we wish we were there with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. So, John, where are you joining us from today? I'm joining uh, due to travel restrictions. We're both joining you from our remote offices. I'm actually in southern Vermont. Okay. Yeah. Hey. And how about you, Greg? I'm actually in Marin, uh, just north of San Francisco. In Marin, north of San Francisco. I love it. So... John, I'm going to start with you. I ask everybody, I say, I want to hear everything from the moment you were born till this very moment, all within about two, three minutes. You think you can pull that off for us? That's a real long story, but yeah, I can easily, <laughs> I can pull it off in, in less time than that. So I uh, spent many years, um, uh, graduated degree in environmental planning, which, which kind of brings me full circle to where I am today, but spent many years as, uh, working for a production home builder running operations and uh, took that and leveraged a lot of the things that um, really were special and unique about um, that type of uh, organization into growing pretty much from the ground up a very large commercial solar developer in EPC, spent many years there, and then decided to really take both of those uh, lines of experience and come in and do something really cool, which is what we're gonna talk about here today. Um, the uh, uh, EcoSmart, uh, as you'll hear, is is something that you may have heard already from some of the builders and from some of the others involved. Is something really special we're doing uh, to allow zero energy capable uh, development and home construction. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, you know, it really, really is cool. And I cannot wait to jump into what that means and really dive into the technology. But first, we got to hear from Greg. Greg, go ahead. I want everything, man. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So my background actually is interesting. I started in high technology. I worked, um, I got a degree in electrical engineering. That's my background. And I worked for uh, companies like Intel and others in the communications and IC world uh, for quite some time. And I made a decision, it was in the early 2000s that um, there was a lot of challenges that uh, the US is facing in the energy sector. And I got involved in grassroots solar energy development. And from there, I branched into uh, helping to start a solar energy developer down in Southern California and built out, it was a lot of fun, built out uh, 50 or 60 projects um, in the uh, commercial, large scale commercial solar. I then uh, moved into working and did a little bit of um, large scale uh, solar for um, utility scale and then really focused going back into residential. I worked for Enphase and helped Enphase start their energy storage uh, product offering. And that was a jumping off point for me to get it to Shell. So I have been with Shell now since that point for the past three years or so. And in that capacity, I've seen quite a few technologies. And uh, most recently, uh, we uh, had a chance to come across EcoSmart Solution. And that looked to be like a really a fantastic platform. And so I jumped in with two feet and am working as the CTO for EcoSmart Solution. 
Uh, I mean, all right. So you, you both have backgrounds that are just absolutely amazing. Let's let's get into you know what exactly Eco Smart Solution is. So if you were to explain it to somebody who doesn't really understand what you do, how would you explain that to them? So so the first thing I like to say is we're the we're the only platform right now who's pairing geothermal renewable energy infrastructure community wide with solar monitoring and other add-ons you'll hear uh, uh some things uh, storage and ev chargers for example but we're pairing those things together to allow not only the development to end up being net zero capable but also individual homes there's a big difference between uh building yeah. something that is net zero energy and building every individual home that's net zero energy capable yeah yeah for sure there is so let's talk about what does net zero capable mean to you guys Greg, I can let you approach that. That's uh, we have we've got a sure. very a solid definition, which uh, yeah. Yeah. Greg. yeah. So the classic definition is one where there is a balance um, of zero between the energy that's consumed by the home and that that's exported. So typically, of course, a home doesn't export any energy; it's a consum consumer of energy. So a um, net zero energy home, classically defined, would be one where you have local, you reduce the energy consumption and you pair that with some kind of local energy generation so that over the course of a full year, you have a zero energy balance. Sometimes maybe you produce more energy than you can consume, and then other times you may consume more than you produce. We have a term called zero energy capable, which uh, we've used, and we, we introduce this term because there was a lot of confusion in terms of really what this all means. Because in fact, there's a lot of uh, difference in terms of how a home will perform based on the homeowner, be homeowner behavior. So one home uh, may be zero energy capable or zero energy um, uh, actual use. Another home that has more intense use by the homeowners might consume more energy. So we design homes that are zero energy capable such that during the course of the year, a homeowner, homeowner can expect to have a zero energy bill, but that may not be the way in which they use their home. They may have a small residual bill, but that's how we, we target the sizing of the home. Yeah, right. And I think that's, that's you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost a cultural shift for families to really monitor how they're using the energy in the home. Uh, and it allows them to adjust their habits to be more energy efficient, to really meet that zero energy capabilities that the home offers. But I, I've said it several times today, if you leave your windows and doors open and run the air conditioning, it's just not gonna, it's just not gonna work. Doesn't work so well. And in fact, I would just add that one of the things that we've made as a real principle is to provide, put in the hands of the homeowner, the visibility yeah. of how they're using their energy. So every home that's built out now, we include an energy monitoring platform so the homeowner can see real time exactly how they're using the energy so they can adapt and make sure they're using the energy in the way that they wish to. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead. D Dave, another thing that uh, uh, we make sure that's in the hands of the homeowners here specifically at Whisper Valley is the Austin Energy Green Builds um, behavior suggestions. This is how you should be living in your house. This is how you live low energy. This is how you live efficiently. This is how you get yourself down net energy capable or net zero energy. You can't do it unless you're you're behaving properly. And that's one of the, the, the neat things about Whisper Valley is, I'm sure you've heard, it is in an extremely difficult um, approval environment. It is uh, yeah. extremely strict codes. And we like to say, and we've been able to prove that if it's working here, it could work literally anywhere where the uh, restrictions are and some other factors are, are, are a little bit easier. Yeah, sure. Well, I can tell you just I've been here for the last two days. And it's working. You know, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful community. All right. So let's jump into the technology. Where, where do we want to start with the technology that is, you know, in this community as well as in the homes? So one of the things I want to want to stress first is the way that we are um, providing this technology package. Greg is, can certainly talk to the technology, but it's really important to talk about how we're providing it. We are packaging energy efficiency, the, the highest energy efficiency HVAC system possible, which is the, your, your ground source heat pumps with the geothermal community-wide infrastructure provided in advance of the lots being uh, built. We're pairing that with um, completely customized 
a solar platform that is sized to the consumption and to the, the heating and cooling loads of each individual house plan. And we're doing that all and then monitoring the whole thing, monitoring the, the electric usage, the, the solar production, the heat pump behavior, and the community-wide infrastructure all in one platform. We're packaging that in such a way that the builders just fold that into their uh, normal process. Having come from a, a production home builder for many years and running operations there, I can tell you that uh, builders are justifiably so a little nervous about bringing things in that are going to change what they do. They're concerned with uh, finding lots first, but then selling, building, delivering on a cadence and making profit on, on a cadence. They don't want to have things that, <coughs> excuse me, that make things complicated, that really uh, change their process. So what we've done is we've packaged this extremely sophisticated, um, highly engineered um, platform in such a way that they could just fold it right into their existing process. So um, and now when we start talking about the different things that become part of the EcoSmart package, it's not scary. It's easy. Yeah, for sure. And we, we had the chance to talk to some of the builders while we're here. And, you know, they were all commenting on how this was put together with your team and Doug's team. And, and they were able to come in and they had all the assistance and all the help that they needed to really be successful with this type of building. And you're right, there's not a lot of builders that know how to take it to this level. Uh, it's becoming more and more, but the fact that you all came together and collaborated and came up with a process in which you can be successful at this, it speaks volumes to what you're doing here. Yep. For sure. All right, Greg, technology, let's talk about it. Sure, my favorite area to discuss. So one thing I would just add is that, you know, I had a lot of involvement with solar energy and energy storage. Um, they're very, very, of course, developed and uh, mainstream. Uh, certainly uh, on the West Coast, we've done a lot of development. That, that was a go-to technology. One of the things that you realize when you're in that space is that if what you're going to do is to take an existing home with its existing energy consumption and then be forced to put up sufficient solar and energy storage to make that a zero energy home, that will require quite a bit of solar. And in many cases, you don't have enough roof space. Certainly in many of the homes in Whisper Valley, there just isn't enough roof space to put that amount of solar, even if you wanted to pay for that expensive technology. And that's why I think it's very critical uh, and really a key cornerstone of EcoSmart's program that we first reduce the energy load of the home using geothermal exchange and a ground source heat pump. And in fact, we'll reduce um, the energy consumption of the heating and cooling system by upwards of 65, 70%, and thereby really reducing the total consumption by almost a half before you even consider putting solar on the roof. So that's really a key point that we fit these pieces together so that you're really getting an affordable and an optimal solution rather than something that's um, really heavily leaning towards one technology or another. Yeah, I, I agree. Can we dive into it a little bit? I mean, this is a large community, 2,000 acres, right? Um, and, and there's a geo grid here and the geothermal, every home's on geothermal. I mean, that's a massive undertaking when you really think about how that works or wasn't it? What, or is it you tell us, I, I wanna learn more about it. I think people would be uh, very interested in learning more about how you can do a community this large all on geothermal. So there's a couple angles to come at that question from or, or to, to a couple answers to this and and uh from the technology side greg can easily answer but from from the infrastructure side i can speak to it so the infrastructure goes in and is able to be made affordable because we're doing it on scale because we're doing it up front because we're doing it when the land is being developed it's part of the entitlement process it's part of the the ground uh improvement process so it goes in along with the other dry utilities, along with the sewer, the stormwater, right up front. So by the time the, uh, the land is completed and the lots are finished, this technology sits there. It would be completely unaffordable to be able to, come, to have to come in afterward and do these one-off. Um, everybody knows anything about geothermal technology, knows that it's been used for many years, for decades, uh, but especially on higher-end homes. The, the specialness we brought to this uh, through the EcoSmart platform at Whisper Valley uh, as a starting point is bringing it down to affordability. So 
It's one thing to build geothermal. It's another thing to build this infrastructure upfront in one shot and make it affordable. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And and so having all this infrastructure in place for these builders to come in was really the key to, to the success. And I, from if I understand correctly, with Google Fiber Opti, you know, Google Fiber that came in and uh, you you did a lot of the geothermal and the trenching all at the same time. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, that's basically the way it's done. I mean, it's it, yeah. we use the analogy that it's no more complicated than connecting up water service. So in every single lot, every single a lot the builder will build on there's a geo grid connection box which looks as i said like a connection to a water system and simply the builder then uh, has their subcontractor um, plumb uh, to that connection box uh, line geothermal water service lines and bring them into the home and then they're connected up to the ground source heat pump and it makes it pretty straightforward and pretty manageable in terms of the integration uh, once it's done up front as I mentioned yeah, yeah, for sure. So go ahead, John. You look like you were going to say something. Dave, yeah, Dave, I was going to say one of, or one of the things I mentioned earlier is having come from that production builder background, really knew that um, replicability and simplification and predictability and scalability was all about what a production builder is about. We know, we know, EcoSmart knows that we can't come in and become a big hurdle. We can't come in and become something that they need to uh, overcome and figure out. So we figure that all out all for them up front and very few changes are required um, in the home plans themselves, which of course we work with up front, we work with the designers up front, we make sure that everything is ready to go by the time these builders step in and, uh, and start building. So we, we like to take our technology and just make it seamless, just integrate the process right in. We become in effect, even though we built the infrastructure, in effect, we become just another trade when it mm -hmm. comes to the builders process. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, I mean, that's the that's the collaboration again coming together. Everybody's pulling in the same direction, which I think is what has to happen. Let's talk about in the home. Let's talk about the value this brings to the consumer and and the comfort level, the healthiness in these homes. Can we get into you know what these systems are doing really to to make this such a wonderful place for them? Sure. Now, I mean, it. Uh, you know, I think one of the things I would just add on to a comment that John was mentioning about the difference between doing this sort of after the fact and doing it up front uh, and the value of the, the geo grid, as we call it, which is this infrastructure that we put in up front. Uh, one of the real advantages of doing that beyond the scale, of course, the fact that we can do it all up front and cost effectively is the fact that you're leveraging as a, a homeowner, you, the whole system and neighbors are sharing the, the geothermal resources across the entire network. So if, if it was required for us or for any builder to put in the geothermal capacity that would be necessary to handle the potential peak cooling, let's say, of any given home, that would be quite a bit of geothermal boreholes that would be, have to be put on an individual lot. But because we've created this network, this residential network of uh, district, um, when you are using the geothermal system, if your cooling capacity outstrips that of your own uh, resources on your lot, you're able to use the geothermal boreholes on your, your street with, amongst your neighbor. And we have a um, centralized uh, energy management center that includes cooling, auxiliary cooling, so that in those cases where it's really warm as it does get in Austin, and you have a lot of homes using that, we can um, kind of provide an additional boost to the cooling capacity. And all of that can be managed and optimized and done at this sort of central district level. If it was done individually, it'd be very prohibitively expensive because you'd have to build out the maximum capacity for every home. So I just wanted to point that out. That's an important thing to note. But in, in the home, and just to kind of dive into the home, um, you know, you have the geothermal heat pump and that's connected to the network. And so it draws um, the geothermal water to be able to provide the heating and cooling that it needs as a balance. It exchanges, mm -hmm. it, it pumps the, the excess heat in the summer, it pumps that into the earth through the exchange and then it draws heat in the winter time, right? That's the way the heat pump works. And in concert with that, of course, we have a smart thermostat, which is used to be able to, on uh, that smart thermostat, which is used to be able to control the heat pump as it would control any sort of heating and cooling equipment. 
And of course, we have solar on the roof. Every single home has solar, which provides offsets the remaining electricity consumption so that we're able to get each home very close to um, zero energy consumption over the course of the year. We also do certain things to work with the builders to make sure that the energy efficiency of the home is conducive. We spray uh, foam the attics. Um, we work with them to make sure that um, their designs are as energy efficient as they can. And we now have introduced um, auxiliary or ancillary um, uh, distributed energy resources like storage. We have a pilot with a Sonin on one of the homes that EcoSmart has. We're actually demonstrating the way in which uh, energy storage works on a daily basis to both right. provide um, uh, benefits in terms of the use of the energy, but also in the case of a grid outage, it fully backs up your home. So there's a number of components which go into the, the home that some of them are required parts and some are optional that the homeowner can choose. I mean, that's just interesting. Yeah, that, I mean, that you're, I mean, you're basically having these, these battery backup storage systems, so to speak, that they can choose just like somebody would choose a gas generator. That's right. Off -grid. Yeah. That's right. And the nice thing about it that we've, we really wanted to put and emphasize is the fact that if there is an outage, one of the things that I, I can assure you that every homeowner wants to make sure of is that their cooling system will work in the summertime uh, when they have a power outage. So we've designed it so that the stone and system in this case um, will keep the heat pump operating and the homeowner will be able to use the resources of their local, um, their local borehole, their local geothermal resource, even if there's a central power outage and the central system is in function. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, John, I know you were going to jump in yeah. there a few times. No, no, I'm just listening. Uh, so, uh, Dave, one of the things you asked about is kind of the, the healthfulness or the healthiness of the homes. And, and yeah. I, think, I think everybody acknowledges that um, home health, healthy construction is going, to, is going to take years to become codified, to become popular, to become mandated, for example. But it's, as we've all seen, unfortunately, with, uh, uh, with the realities with the pandemic, that's being accelerated. So anything that can be done for the health inside the home, uh, uh, noise pollution, air quality, predictability and maintenance, predictability and performance, um, predictability in the, in the amount of air being exchanged, the amount of humidity, humidity being controlled. This is something that uh, once the industry and the, uh, the authorities uh, having jurisdiction over codes catch on and start making this, um, you know, more of a more of a codified uh, set of rules for people to follow. They're going to realize that the industry is going to realize that ground source heat pumps are an incredibly, not only efficient but incredibly healthy way to be constructing. Um, I'm sure you've heard from some of the builders that you know something as simple as not having external or exterior condensers on air conditioning units throughout the community is a big benefit from a, from a noise pollution standpoint. Um, so. We don't we don't think that that health codes are coming around uh, uh, right away, but we certainly think over the next five to ten years it's going to develop. And being on the forefront of that um, uh, makes us feel good. Uh, makes us feel like we can offer some of the most progressive developers and some of the most progressive builders out there a means for getting uh, healthy construction, uh, getting in front of it. And just like the energy crisis is a thing that tipped off or pushed. Um, Energy efficient, energy efficient construction years ago. Um, this pandemic is going to be what really jump starts um, the the concept around healthy buildings. So we're we're right there. Yeah, and are you feeling it and seeing it? I mean, a lot, I know a lot of other people are feeling and seeing that. You know, yes, as bad as this crisis is, you know, something typically good comes out of it as well. And in the housing industry, you know, that good is building smarter, better, more efficient, more sustainable homes that are healthy. Right. So we we like to think of it as, you know, and, and I think personally think I think we at EcoSmart think that smart home is kind of an overused um, buzzword at this point. I mean, anybody building new construction now should be doing things that are highly technical or you know, high yeah. technology home that makes it a smart home. Right. So that's not different. What we think is different is packaging that with not just those smart features, if you will. But we think what's really smart about it is getting the entire community to be tying in to be zero energy capable and every single individual home being tied in to be zero energy capable and being able to monitor the entire ecosystem out there. That's what's right. really unique. That's what we think is a smart way to be uh, to be moving forward. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And Greg, I mean, your thoughts from a technology standpoint, I mean, we're, we're just kind of, we're, we're, we're at the tip of the iceberg with technology here, but we, there's so much more for the, that the future holds for everything we're doing, right? Definitely. I think that, you know, it's not just the integration of all these technologies that make a perfect balance for the home, but then as a collective community, um, there's the opportunity to provide other services broader than just within the home to the to the rest of the uh, the community or, or at large um, the utilities. So many utilities are really looking for ways moving forward to not have to build uh, more poles and wires and more infrastructure, which is not what people want to do, or put on more plants online. They're really looking for smart, uh, reactive, flexible load that can be optimized so that uh, when it's really a peak peak time, uh, you can actually throttle back on the energy use for these communities. And that's really what we're setting up. We're laying in all that intelligence, all that smarts that John mentioned to be able to do so. So the solar that's on the roof um, can be controlled. They're smart inverters. They all can be controlled. The heat pumps actually act almost like an energy uh, storage. So you can actually pre-cool the homes. You can actually pre-cool the earth, we can do that uh, seasonally. So there's a lot of advantages and a lot of options for us to be able to provide these sorts of services down the road to utilities, uh, which are really looking forward to those. Sure. This community is in, you know, in Austin, Texas. Is this something that you can take anywhere? We are in the process of taking it. Well, I should say we're in the process of taking it very carefully to a couple of select uh, and, and um, very high profile land developers and builders in other markets. And um, we think it's something very special. It's not just a builder wants to be in a particular market that, you know, the, that that's location location. Uh, we think it's special here is, is pairing up with developers and, and builders who really want to be doing something that's unique, want to, or something that's very special. Um, we're really truly building zero energy capable communities. So yes, it is being taken to other markets uh, carefully. Um, and uh, selectively, yeah. and very importantly, it works in something like 95% of the country. So wherever master plan communities are, uh, are, are happening or are going to happen, wherever large scale development subdivisions or multifamily uh, programs are likely to be happening, um, geothermal uh, paired with the, with the uh, solar storage and other monitoring features we're doing, it works great. Right, right. So uh, another topic, uh, you know, in line with this, I mean, so you, you got the masterminds behind the technology in these communities. Let's talk service the community as well with the homeowners. You know, are, are we treating home as a service in, in this instance? I'm sorry, you cut out a little bit there, Dave. Uh, I didn't hear yeah, you. Yeah, so, uh, so let's talk about the service you guys offer. So you, you, you build all the technology. We have all these wonderful homeowners living here. They may or may not know how to use, the, use everything in the most efficient ways they can. Talk about how you service them. Oh, boy, that, that's a, that is right up our alley. That, so we have an on-site representative who is literally uh, tuned in, knows every homeowner on a first-name basis, uh, knows what their hot buttons are, knows how thrilled they are with us. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, and, and by the way, we do provide that service after, after sale. We're not just a, um, you know, a supplier there. We're actually building the community. We own the geo grid. So we own their energy system. So we're there to serve our customer who is all the homeowners. Yeah. So right. we're not only just servicing it after the sale, we are, are actually providing service and commissioning and, and comments and, uh, guides and hints about how your system operates and, uh, it's one of the things we enjoy the most. We're in a we're in a very we're in a service industry, and that's what uh, with the team that I'm putting together, we're putting together really uh, really thrives on. Yeah, I mean, I mean that is awesome, right? So think about it. you. You not only have the the minds behind it, but you also have the same people behind it helping to service the community and the homeowners and bring all that benefit. So another question is, you know, affordability, right? This technology for a one-off builder doesn't allow them to use it in affordable homes. Can you talk about the price points that we have in the community and, and how all that ties in with affordability? You know, it's the, the, the builders are probably best able to, to answer that, but I can say that um, what we're packaging in is inclusive. The geothermal 
the geogrid, which is the geothermal heating and cooling uh, capacity, the, the connection box on each lot, the heat pump in each, in each unit, we're actually specifying, and, and of course, all the monitoring and all the smart features that do go with it. Uh, we're also then very carefully specifying uh, the size of the solar package that the builder needs to uh, supply. So when I say when you say that the total price point, it ranges a little bit. It might range from as little as twenty thousand dollars to as much as forty thousand dollars, but it really depends very much on you know who's which slice of the pie you're talking about. It's not right. all provided by EcoSmart. It's not all provided by the builder. So there is some there is some um, uh, cross pollination there, but. The key in with working with EcoSmart is we're very transparent about it. We we work very very openly with the builders. We show them exactly the benefits that uh, that, that they're going to see, that their home buyers are going to see, and that the development at large is going to see. Right, right. I and mean, would, it, go ahead, Greg. I was sorry. Say, to that point, every home is gets a HERS certification, so the builder and the homeowner knows exactly what is the energy value of all of these elements they're putting into the home. And it's done using, you know, a independent rating uh, agency, ResNet, that manages that so that the homeowner, the builder and the homeowner can, can feel assured that there's value and they know what the value is benchmarked against uh, a standard, uh, not highly energy efficient, uh, new built home. So we target uh, homes that are a HERS rating of 25 or lower and that provides significant uh, financial value, economic value to the homeowner in terms of energy savings that they can actually calculate. So right. Dave, also also importantly, you asked about affordability and price points. I'm sure you've had plenty of conversation with the developer and the builders there. Uh, this yeah. is not pricing uh, Whisper Valley out of the market or above the market. We're right in there where the market is, or they are right in there where the market is. So the great thing that they're able to do is partner with us. We collaborate all as a three-way relationship, really four ways when you consider the home buyer. Uh, to Greg's point, the home if there wasn't a home buyer who wanted to be uh, highly efficient and uh, with a low energy bill, there'd be no market for it. It's right. moving more and more toward home buyers getting much more sophisticated, much more demanding. It's moving uh, more rapidly toward uh, jurisdictions making their codes much more difficult to meet, um, making zero energy, making low carbon impact uh, more the code. And going forward, it's just going to get stricter and stricter as we go across the country. So um, sure. we're not we're not the things that uh, we are working together with with our EcoSmart package does not end up pricing uh, the homes any higher than the than, than the market, which is which is the really cool thing about it. Right. And that's that's really the value here. I mean, you're getting an affordable house with it within market rate of this you know, area. But you're getting all the latest technology and then some to include zero or very little utility bills with your house. So that that's that's to me the leg up. I mean, that's right. I mean, you can be as comparable as any other uh, developer out there in this area. But the difference with you guys is, hey, listen, I'm going to have a home and I'm going to know what my utility bill is every month as long as my kids pay attention to what I tell them. Right, which is a good if, but yes, you're right. <laughs> yeah, that is a big if. It's a, it's a big if. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, listen, let's uh, let's uh, we got a comment or so over here. Let's hop in and take a look. And oh, look at that, we got George Ryman joining us. Sorry, we're getting your face cut off there a little bit uh, from from Phoenix, Arizona. And he says, very interesting. And then Jennifer, sorry about that. I'm, I'll get it off of you in one second. Would it be too cost prohibitive to retrofit master plan communities to embrace the health and wellness amenities today? Today, sustainable act, activists demand. What can existing communities do to be more eco conscious? Wow, that is a that that's first of all the first comment. How interesting and how neat, how exciting. I agree. That's what we're doing here. It is really interesting, neat, and exciting. So I couldn't agree more. Secondly, we've thought long and hard about how this could be eventually brought to um, existing communities. And at a large enough scale, it might work. I know there are some, some serious limitations to you know, how you put new infrastructure into an existing community. It's not to say that it can't be done. Uh, it, it might be difficult. Some of the things that we're talking about here, um, you know, the uh, certainly the monitoring capabilities and the energy generation capabilities, those things can be brought anywhere, literally anywhere. And there's builders that are doing that now. But retrofitting an entire existing community with geothermal, um, you know, that, that's a, that brings its own its own set of uh, logistic challenges. Yeah, 
For sure. All right, thank you, Jennifer. And that, there's Betsy Scott. I'm sitting here with the developer, Holmes, and Whisper Valley are running 250 to 450 with all the tech built in. 200s are quite low for this area. So there you have it. Betsy's actually sitting with, with the developer of this project right now. So, I mean, listen, I mean, I live in New England. I mean, it's a fixer upper, right? And I mean, a lot of fixer upper for, for anything in that range where we live. I couldn't imagine, you know, the value that this brings uh, to have all this technology. And no utility bill. I can't get over it. We agree. We agree. And it works. I mean, yeah. but, so, so we, we, you say what we, we talk about, you know, when, we, when, when the management team at Ecosmart gets together, we talk about what defines success for us. Well, what defines success is making what we're doing simple first, making what we're doing scalable second, and then letting the results by the home from the home owners and the home buyers just speak for themselves. Yeah. You know, th th this is when you, when you talk to home buyers throughout Whisper Valley, they're thrilled with what they're seeing and, and, and uh, how it's performing and especially the cost savings they're getting as a result. Yeah, for sure. And you know what? We, we spoke to several of them today and, and that's exactly it. I mean, they love it. And they've been here long enough to see the impact that it has on the community and on them personally. Uh, and they just talk about how the community of what, what, what you've put into this package and offered has made them actually want to talk about it in the culture. Well, how did you get to zero? I had a $5 bill, or I had, that's what's so, so super cool about this. And one of the, one of the builders uh, even was talking about their trades are taking this information outside of the community when they work on other jobs. So they're expanding the knowledge of what, what you're doing here. And I, I think that's a really big benefit to the community in Austin. For sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, let's see who else we have uh, tuning in here. I have one more question from Jennifer. Can you share with us more about the Austin Energy Green Building Program or what other cities are looking to adopt, looking to adopt something similar? Wow, that's a great question, Jennifer. Um, I would say that there's, you know, when you, when you get to some, some areas that's being mandated statewide that you don't, for example, build new gas into a community. And some right. communities being built uh, citywide that says any new master plan development or any development over X number of homes or X acreage needs to be uh, net zero. You know, so the, it varies across the country and there really is no standard. There are some uniform uh, construction codes, but um, green energy codes and um, the ability or the desire to get down to energy efficiency and uh, carbon neutrality really is really become a, a series of political decisions and conversations at each state and sometimes within each state. So it's really hard to pick and choose um, uh, which other ones might be that might be as tough. But I can tell you there are many of them out there. I can tell you the many out there because some of the developers and the builders that contact us are trying to solve the same problem that Whisper Valley has already solved. Yeah. yeah, and I would say you know the 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 specific program that Austin Energy, the Green Build program they have, it's a it's sort of a, a very standard type of an approach. Um, it's probably one of the more um, the longer running. It's been around for quite some time, and they've evolved it over time. But basically, it scores um, all sorts of attributes uh, on a rating system, and effectively, what we've been able to deliver is out of the box, uh, a builder gets a two star. Um, green building rating from AG, from AGP's uh, code uh, as a green uh, building if they follow the platform. So you get that kind of out of the box. Uh, but it goes through and scores all sorts and it mandates um, many different things that you should do to make sure that um, you're evaluating your energy use to make sure that your um, HVAC system is performing correctly, the ductwork is done correctly. There's a lot of attention paid to um, the building envelope and sealing it correctly. So I think overall, it really does provide um, a good framework for a program like EcoSmart to be integrated into because it really highlights the um, advantages of using the, the program to achieve where the green building program um, is trying to get to. Yeah, for sure. So we're, we're, we're here and, you know, fortunate enough to be doing this with the Housing Innovation Alliance. And, you know, the Housing Innovation Alliance feels that health is the new energy efficiency in homes. What is your opinion on that? Well, again, I think it, it's going to evolve over time. Um, certainly, the like I said before, the, the, the pandemic has certainly brought that to people's uh, the forefront of their thought right now. 
Um, there is no standardization around healthy building right now, especially in residential construction. We think it's going to develop over years, uh, next three, four, five years or more. We think it's accelerated by the reality of the pandemic. Um, uh, but we do think that um, what we're providing is going to be going to help solve that problem when it, when it does become part of the code. Um, it's really hard to predict, just as it was hard to predict how deep and how accepted energy efficiency would become. It went through steps. It went through. It, it lurched forward. Uh, first, you had to do one thing. Then you had to do another. And then there was Energy Star. And then there were things that really didn't uh, end up with a big impact um, on the in, on the home construction altogether. We think health healthy construction is going to follow that same uh, same process. Yeah, I think so too. We're seeing it all over now. And I think, you know, as unfortunate as COVID is, it has sped up some of the thought process and people taking the time to really understand the value of it. And I think that's changing things. And you, you, you guys already knew the value of it. And that's what's so interesting here. And you, you were doing this long before. I think it's becoming, a, a, it's, you know, it's, it's starting to be cool. Right, it's starting to be cool to geek out on energy savings, right, and, and healthy. You know, one thing I would just you know interject something that had been done long before the the pandemic and the concerns about um, our current outbreak. Uh, one of the policies that EcoSmart uh, put into place long before actually John and I began was that as a service, again, we are an energy service provider, that we would uh, work with the homeowners to make sure that every six months they had a filter change. I mean, one of the most fundamental, non-tech, simple, but really important things to do is change your filters on a regular basis because when they get all clogged up, the system doesn't work. So we said to, to help homeowners get acclimated to the whole process and to make sure that their systems out the gate are gonna be running for the first few years, we have implemented a, a program um, at EcoSmart where we change, automatically change for the homeowner, their filters for the first few, uh, few years. So I think that's a service obligation we're providing. We'll have, of course, be extending that techn technologically, but I think it's simple, even simple things like that to make the homeowners aware of what they can do to improve the indoor air quality that they have. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen guys, we're gonna take one more, uh, we've got one more comment here I wanna put up for somebody tuning in. They said, Andrew Seely, great conversation all, hard to overstate the benefit of deleting noisy condenser fans in a high demand AC city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, be the best the best the the best thing we, we like to say when we're visiting uh, when the team is visiting Whisper Valley is you know EcoSmart Solutions helping putting the whisper in Whisper Valley. You can literally sit out on your porch with a home close by on small lots and not hear that irritating condenser noise. And it, it is it truly is a it's a it's a it's one of the benefits. It's not a direct benefit. It's not a uh, you know you can't point to it and say this is why I'm buying here. But it just really. Right lends yourself to say this is really something really cool yeah that 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 quote right there would be a great t-shirt to hand out to all the community but the they wear them everywhere and everybody will ask them what does that mean yeah. i love it i love it well listen uh john and uh greg thank you so much for taking some time to speak with us today and and share your vision on everything really looking forward to seeing what you guys uh pull up, you know, pull out of your hat here in the future, you know, cause topping this is, is, you know, the next thing for you, you know, and what you're doing here and continuing to grow this technology, continuing to grow, you know, home as a service, so to speak, where we're educating and teaching uh, the communities how to live better and healthier and more sustainable, all in an affordable price, I think is uh, very, very commendable. And that you guys had the vision to come up and with these ideas and these thoughts, bravo. So thank you for all those uh, those comments. We agree with every one of them. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say I, my apologies one more time that Greg and I couldn't join uh, face to face with uh, some travel restrictions and some 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 uh, things that we, we we felt it was it was necessary to join from a distance. But really great, really great talking to you and answering some of the questions you guys had. Yeah, no, really, really great as well. And hey, I'm in New England. I can I can swing in and see you any time up there. And Greg, I might be in California in two weeks as well. So I'll look you both up. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, well, listen, everybody. So thank you so much for, for joining and everybody, thank you for, uh, you know, giving your comments and just tuning in and listening to this. Whisper Valley is an amazing community. It's been a lot of fun being here today. It's been a lot of fun uh, talking to not only the folks behind the scenes, but the people that are actually living here as well. Uh, and I think that tells a great, great story for what you're doing and what Whisper Valley is doing. So uh, 
Got to check it out. We're moving here. I just told my wife. So that's it. We're packing <laughs> up in the Whisper Valley. All right. But All listen, right. this is it, guys. So we are in Austin, Texas at, with the Housing Innovation Alliance at Whisper Valley. Thank you for joining. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.